I could not be standing in a better place. Watch this. 60, 50 and the Expo 2020 logo. Well, where am I? I'm standing here at the Indian High School Dubai premises. And why am I here? Because the school is celebrating 60 years of its presence in the UAE. And as you know, the UAE also is celebrating 50 years of its federation. So we're bringing both of them together and uh, we are uh, rehashing a bit of history here. So uh, I'm here uh, to meet the CEO and the chairman of the school to understand um, how the school came in, into existence uh, 60 years ago and what has made it the success it is today. Thank you. It was wonderful to have you uh, at the Indian High Group of Schools. We're at the Ud Mehta campus. Yes. You asked us to speak a bit about the history of the school. Yes. It's a fascinating history. So we're celebrating our 60 years this year, which means we were obviously set up in 1961. And the school was actually set up in 1957 okay. by a wonderful uh, pioneer by the name of Himkala Bain. Okay. And uh, she set up something which is called Bharat Vidyale. Mm -hmm. That's important to know why did she set it up. Right. It's because right from day one, the mm -hmm. focus was on the learner. Okay. So there was a wonderful need for high quality education even at that point in time and Himkala Bain was very quick to realize that if the Indian diaspora needed to survive in Dubai then they would need a good quality school so she approached uh, the wonderful Sri Maganmal Pancholia ji because initially in 1957 we started only with maybe approximately 10 children in a house uh, in Bar Dubai and as you know that the numbers started creeping up pretty quickly uh, so when she went to Shri Maganwal Panchulia ji, he said, okay, now it's time to actually take the school to the next level, um, right? And he was a visionary. And then he approached a lot of what, what we call today our trustees right. to actually set up the school all on, on a philanthropic, non-for-profit basis. So right from 1957 to date, the school is, remains true to its core of providing high quality affordable education to the Indian diaspora. So from 10 students to 13,000 students today, how has the growth uh, happened? So it's been a fantastic journey. I think the growth of the school echoes the growth of this wonderful city and the wonderful country that we are in. So if you look at the vision of the late His Highness Sheikh Rashid bin Said al Maktoum, he realized very quickly that the Indian community here would need a wonderful piece of land for the school. So when the Indian community approached uh, the late His Highness Sheikh Rashid, they had two requests. They had a request for a temple, uh, the Srinaji Sri Krishna temple, which was the land of which was given close to the ruler's court. And uh, His Highness was very benevolent in giving us this massive plot of land, which is where you are today, for the Indian High Ud Mehta. And at that time, it wasn't known as the Ud Mehta campus, it was just the Indian high school. And it's an interesting story, it's an anecdote here for you, where a lot of the community members felt at that point in time that this is the back and beyond. Yes. And it's very far. But His Highness, being a visionary, felt that this is the right location for the school. Yes. And the community yes. around it would develop. Yes. And I think where we are today and the fact that we have 13,000 children now, Okay, and we have three campuses. So we have a campus in Ud Mehta, we have a campus in Garud, and we have a very new campus in Dubai Silicon Oasis. So you have the trustees who along with the rulers of this land look ahead and have planned and didn't want to just be in Ud Mehta. And that has contributed to the growth. Of course, the wonderful business experience and the job opportunities available in Dubai meant that the school always has people who are interested in studying yeah. and I would also like to say that we have been blessed with fantastic talent and teachers who want to mm -hmm. teach at our school. So those are probably the critical success factors mm -hmm. behind the growth of the school. So we are in the thick of a pandemic. Uh, how is the school coping with it and uh, what is the school doing to give back to the community? So as a community school, as a non-for-profit community school, mm -hmm. Again, we remain very much true to our mission about providing high quality, affordable education to the Indian diaspora. Now, obviously, there were a lot of families affected during the pandemic. And the key for any school is obviously to focus on the learner. 
So we were very, very keen and we have several initiatives that we launched and which still exist. So the one major initiative that we launched was offering need-based admissions. So people who demonstrated financial need were able to actually get um, uh, a seat in the school. As you know, there's a, there's a waiting list in the thousands for this school, but obviously a lot of families were affected in the pandemic. Yeah. So we created a need-based admission criteria. Okay. The other thing is the trustees mm -hmm. uh, were very, very forward-thinking and very, very benevolent in, in, in creating a bursary fund. Okay. So our existing, okay. our existing parents, our existing yeah. learners who were affected by the pandemic yeah. uh, were supported by the bursary. And it has been a challenging yeah. time because yeah. for us, uh, as a community school, we're very dependent on transport. Right. And the pandemic meant that we couldn't operate the right. school transport as we normally yeah. would. And even when we yeah. came back mm -hmm. uh, earlier on, and now mm -hmm. we are blessed uh, that is 100% capacity, but before the capacity was lowered. Okay. So that obviously meant that, yeah. that put a lot of uh, financial stress. Mm -hmm. And there are other small initiatives that we do, uh, whether it be it monthly installments. Right. So there's no pressure um, okay. on parents. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, we also tied up with a couple of banks in offering interest-free easy payment plans. So even though we are monthly and the average fee point is at 550 dirhams a month, mm -hmm. but we realized pretty quickly that our learners and our parents would require support. Right. Now the beauty of in being in a community school is you know, when you have 13,000 learners and you've got 1,650 teaching and non-teaching staff, being part of the community is in your DNA. It's in your ethos. Right. So that's I think what this yeah. group of schools is blessed with, mm. the senior leadership team, right. the teachers, they right. all rallied oh, yes. behind the school. Okay. Right? I'm proud to That's say that it's a support strong. system because, you know, the teachers are the real heroes. The yeah. hero, and, and superheroes don't always need to wear a cape. Yeah. Right? So the teachers are teachers and teachers across the group across the world, I would yeah. say, but specifically in this community non-for-profit school, mm -hmm. they have been very much on the front line. Right. They have been teaching mm -hmm. non-stop on distance learning. Okay. Right? They right. may not have received any formal training, mm -hmm. given the window that we had in terms of going online. Mm -hmm. They had to look after their own families. Mm -hmm. And I think the final feather in our cap was when the KHDA mm -hmm. inspections by the government of Dubai mm -hmm. actually vetted mm -hmm. the Indian High group of schools, all three, of our campuses as having received the fully developed rating. I think that's a massive feather in our cap. Yeah. Because irrespective of the price point, mm -hmm. our teachers you know, took the challenge mm -hmm. and said, hang on a minute, here's an opportunity. We've been you know, used to teaching with the whiteboard marker, uh, the chalk and, and the traditional way, but hey, this is it. They gave probably two weeks mm -hmm. and they did an excellent job. So initially when we launched online learning during the pandemic, we had parents who were a bit skeptical and saying, hey, you know, we really want to come back face to face. From that journey we have come now, where a lot of parents say, hey, we're very comfortable doing online. You're doing a very, very good job. Mm -hmm. And as we know, uh, come October, children are going to be back. We very much look forward to receiving these children back. Mm -hmm. Our hallways have been empty. Uh, and now as the government gets ready for Expo, the UA ready is to get back to the right normal. We look forward to getting our children back. So the UAE is celebrating 50 years of its federation. What is uh, the school's vision for the next 50 years? So it's befitting. So the, the federation celebrates 50 years. The Indian High Group of Schools is celebrating uh, its 60 years, the Diamond Jubilee. And it's the year of the Expo. So we have created a theme which is 60 at 50 at 2020. Uh, and that's the theme that the trustees have created to celebrate mm -hmm. the legacy of this wonderful school. Mm -hmm and also to celebrate the success of the wonderful country that we are in. Mm -hmm. And I think if I have to look 50 years ahead or 60 years ahead, I think we are blessed to be in this country which has a vision, okay. right? So if you look at the vision of this country in terms of supporting the expatriate community, mm -hmm. in terms of supporting all the residents, mm -hmm. right? if you look at uh, the recent 10 principles of the Federation that His Highness yeah. uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum mm -hmm and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan launched. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful because it gives us a bedrock. Mm -hmm. It gives us almost like a template. Okay. And I think the key focus for us going forward is going to be no different than what it used to be. Focusing on our stakeholders. You focus on the people. Mm -hmm. You focus on the learners. Mm -hmm. You focus on the parents. You focus on your teachers, right? Everything else around it is peripheral. So whether you look at technology, whether you look at other enablers, 
They are mere catalysts. But the human interaction and the fact that you want to provide high quality learning, if you, you, know, you, you want to continue to provide and you know, teach effectively to students so that they can remain in Dubai and they can continue to call Dubai home, I think that is something that we will continue to focus on. So it's a wrap uh, from uh, the school here. Thank you so much, Mr. Puneet, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, if you do know of other uh, events that you would like to cover as part of the UA celebration of uh, the 50 years of Federation, do let us know. For now, it's a wrap here. This is Anjana Kumar for Gulf News.